Hi there, nice people here, hello, lady and gentlemen. Tonight I finally got my hands on this K-Bar TDI flipper folder. This model came out this year, 2023, and for some reason it's been sold out on most uh, websites, but my local dealer had one, one of them. One of my favorite knife reviewers, Neves Knives, already reviewed this knife uh, when they first came out. His review was very positive, so I'm not going to focus on all the things uh, that he already covered, maybe in, uh, in passing. But I noticed a couple other things that I would like to talk about that weren't covered in his videos. This knife's noble lineage starts with K-Bar TDI Investigator, which was intended as an get-out-of-trouble knife for military and police. So, what I'm not going to do is slice cardboard. This knife deserves a Tree of Doom test. What is a Tree of Doom test? It's the test where I stab the knife as hard as I can into a dead oak tree that has a slightly softer outer layer and a really hard core. And the softer outer layer gets waterlogged during the rain. And as you know, the water is incompressible. I have broken 12 blades. Their tips are stuck somewhere in that tree. And I still do it because I think if the knife can't take it, it's not my EDC knife. You think that these things should never be done with a folding pocket knife? Write a comment. See how many likes you will get. But if you do want to ask a question why am I doing that, the answer is I enjoy doing it. I buy these knives, I pay for them out of my own pocket. Nobody tells me what to do with them. And I enjoy finding out how good or bad they are. And sometimes I get surprised. Okay, so here you can see that manipulating the knife with a glove hand, at least for me, was a little harder than without it and the knife developed a vertical blade plate. Now the play is very minor. It's audible and you can feel it, but it's not huge. And I think the reason is there's a machining goof up. The engagement surface on the blade is not parallel to the crossbar. See how unevenly the paint or finish is wearing out? On the other hand, and that is very important, this knife is holding up to the spine strike test much better than some of the more expensive knives that I recently tested. Let's replay. Guess knife testing is not for everyone. Nor was it the only knife that developed the vertical play after I played with it. Just look and listen to this Benchmade full-size Adamas. Did you notice that this knife has a bent pistol grip style handle? This magnifies the twisting moment that you can exert on the blade. Can this handle handle the load? After all, it's a molded plastic with very minimal metal liners. This knife had minor side-to-side -side play out of the box and the test did not make it worse. Now I'm going to see for the first time if I can tune it out. And I think I did, and the knife still functions. Now let's take a look at the blade design. So as you can see, it's a spear point style blade. It has a dagger-like geometry. Only one side of the edge is sharpened. This top false edge is not sharp. The only damage it suffered after stabbing the oak tree was this minor smoothing out of the finish as well as slight discoloration. The tip is still intact. Should I want to sharpen the other edge or the false edge, look how deep it sits inside the handle. I could have this entire area sharpened if I wanted to increase the piercing ability of this knife. Basically, you could have an extra inch of sharpened blade without any detriment to the pocket safety of this knife. See where it ends up? Let's measure the official edge though. And what we get here is three inches of a sharpened edge. 
Since the knife bears uncanny resemblance to the Spyderco knives, it would be impossible to not compare it to Manix 2 and Paramilitary 3. So let's take a look. Manix 2 has the exact same sharpened edge length as the TDI, but the handle is a solid inch, maybe even more longer. And uh, paramilitary has the same exact size handle, but a slightly shorter, quarter inch shorter sharpened edge. One thing that these knives have and TDI doesn't is the finger choil right here. I find it a missed opportunity. The ergonomics of the knife, it's totally suitable for finger choil. The reason I'm bringing this bug out into the picture, I'd like to illustrate why I'm seriously unhappy with the fact that TDI has no provision for attaching a lanyard. There's no lanyard hole or slot or anything at all. And there's not even a slot in the uh, uh, pocket clip to do that. And the reason I like my lanyards is because in this lanyard on my bug out embedded is a piece of metal right here that I can then insert into the slot behind the uh, access lock and now the knife is locked. I can do much more severe tasks with it. And it with the design of the TDI, that would be a perfectly suitable approach. And this way you would have your little lock bar to your crossbar always with you, but there's no provisions for the um, lanyard hole. And not knowing what's inside this knife or how does it look when disassembled, I have no idea if I could find a spot to drill a hole for the lanyard. What's aggravating to me is there's only one knife influencer out there uh, called Metal Complex who's been on the quest to eliminate lanyard holes. He doesn't use them, so therefore the world doesn't need them. That's his mentality. Look, guys, from what I've seen in his videos, he doesn't get outside much. He films the knives in the basement and doesn't do much with them. I work with a bunch of military guys in uniform who constantly ask me to uh, make uh, lanyards for their knives like this. Obviously, they see utility in doing that and here we have a knife that's geared toward military personnel with no lanyard hole i find it very kind of disappointing on the good news side this is a standard benchmade pocket clip and it will totally fit the hole pattern on the tdi so i went ahead and tested this theory and uh here's what i found so first of all this is a uh, aftermarket Benchmade style pocket clip. As you can see, it protrudes uh, about the same amount as the original clip right here um, in this direction. What I also found that this is the original uh, screw from K-Bar and this is a Benchmade sized screw. They both are T6, but this thread size is much smaller. So you will have to reuse the original screws and then you will have one spare what I also like it's like uh, now a blackout look and this particular clip matches the finish on the blade which um, the typical Benchmade doesn't this is an aftermarket um, Amazon clip I'll provide the link to that they're very inexpensive disassembling this knife was actually easier than the Benchmade bug out the evidence that the knife is properly designed is in the captive pivot hardware. You only need one driver to remove it and uh, it's a T8. For the other four screws that you'll be removing, uh, it's a T6. The blade rides on these two brass single row bearings. These are recessed into the blade, which makes assembly a lot easier. The flipper tab is massive. And as you can see, it complicates the geometry of the back side of the blade. But I have a plan for it. At this point, I'm assessing the design of the scales to see if I can find a spot where it would be logical to drill a lanyard hold. 
I am obsessed with the thought that they missed an opportunity to put a finger trowel on such a wide blade. That would make it a great sort of project knife. So I'm assessing that there's plenty of meat on the flipper lever to remove material and uh, extend the finger trowel right into the edge. A good design feature on this knife is that all the screws that are not threaded into the liners thread into metal thread certs. That is similar to such an iconic knife as uh, Benchmade Griptilium. Handling the knife, I noticed that the inner edges of the scales are extremely sharp. They did not deburr them or round off the edges. So I'm going to do it with this file. Are you ready to see the knife hacks that I did upon this knife? I'm actually thinking about starting a channel called Knife Hacks, which will be focused on doing what I'm about to show you, while keeping cutting board reviews as a channel that is solely focused on independent, unaffiliated, unmonetized, and in no way encumbered uh, knife reviews with honest opinions. Let me know in the comments if you would be interested to see me continue one channel or split it up and do both. Enough talk, and here's the knife. It now has a lanyard hold, a deep pocket clip, a finger choil, and the secondary edge on the top. Let me show you how it all performs. Take a quick look. All right, so the deep pocket clip is an aftermarket Benchmade style clip. The lanyard hole is quarter inch and the lanyard has a metal insert at the tip that enables me to use it as a lock bar to this crossbar lock. As you can see, the secondary edge is well hidden inside the handle and in no way endangers my fingers when the knife is pocketed. The secondary edge is one inch long and it's pretty sharp, enabling me to cut in both directions. Time to see how my creation will handle this Kevlar vest. This is an old expired Kevlar vest, so it cannot be used as a bullet protection. Let's see how it would do against it. I placed a dense foam block inside the vest to give some resistance to the strike. Take a look at how far the blade traveled. A wound that's one and a half inches deep would hurt. And for comparison, here's the TDI Investigator fixed blade without the secondary edge. Only a half inch penetration. Straight out the box, this knife could flip and it could cut. Now it can flip, cut, penetrate, reverse cut, detail cut, open boxes, sit deep in your pocket, work uh, as a chopper or batoning knife with the use of the safety pin, and its ergonomics was greatly improved by deburring the inner edge of the scales. Or, lanyard can be little. And its ergonomics were greatly improved by removing the sharp edges from the inner. And its ergonomics was greatly improved by removing sharp edges from the inner edges of the. And its ergonomic was greatly improved by removing. <laughs> Take 25.